Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. And now to your hosts, Ken Jakes and Julie Johnson. Hello, this is Julie Johnson. I'm the Senior Communications Manager at SIP and welcome to our weekly podcast, Democracy That Delivers. My usual co-host, Ken Jakes, is away today and I've been joined by Natalia Otel-Belan, our Deputy Regional Director for Europe, Eurasia and South Asia at SIP. Thanks so much, Natalia, for co-hosting with me today. It's a pleasure to be here. And we have a very special guest today. Uh, we have the Ambassador of the Republic of Albania to the United States, Floretta Faber, with us here today. Ambassador Faber was previously the Executive Director of the American Chamber of Commerce in Albania and held that position since the Chamber's opening in 2000. And she's a longtime friend of SIPE, and we're really delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to me today. I'm going to let Natalia kick off the show. <laughs> Um, hello. Um, at SAIP, we work with business associations around the world, and many of our listeners today uh, are probably SAIP partners who work or manage business associations. Uh, you were previously the head of Albanian um, American Chamber of Commerce. Um, how did you become interested in business associations, and what led you to this field? Um, thank you very much, really, for giving me the opportunity, because... Uh, in this, it's like this new life I love when I have to talk for the previous one. And I've been working with the American Chamber of Commerce in Albania from 2000 when it was open until 2015 when I came to this new position. It's a really interesting question to ask how I, I, I got interested for that. I had previously a uh, experience working with the Chambers of Commerce. I was coming after two years of studying in Norway and the United States and working for a very prestigious company as Deloitte & Touche. Uh, the businesses were increasing in Albania and you could see that their uh, working together or their voice, it wasn't heard in any way. There were a few... Um, uh, public chambers of commerce around that could not really see their members as a strong voice to work with, but they would uh, look really in other perspectives. And uh, it was really a big opportunity. When I heard that the American Chamber was to open, I, I, I really had seen that need from the businesses where I was working. So I said, you know, why not? It's an opportunity. You can work with people. You can stronger their voice and uh, let me try it. So it was good that they accepted my uh, application and um, I had a chance to work with uh, Amcham since then. Were and you, sorry, were you, uh, had you been working overseas prior to that or you were working in Albania? I was working in Albania. So you had seen from the perspective of a business the kind of support that businesses need and the, the value that a business association could business bring? Business was quite new that time in Albania. In 2000, it was after a few difficult years we had in Albania and the business, especially a few industries like construction, was really growing. Uh, when Amcham was to open, uh, there were only three business organizations around, private ones, mm -hmm. and uh, um, there were no, in any way or format, there was no history or tables like how business uh, would come together on the same table with the government. It's sometimes strange to remember, but there was this time when there was no history of businesses and government working in any way together. Even though the government was increasing the, the, the understanding, the importance of business community, and they played the big role of developing the country uh, because of the, of the new uh, businesses that were open, the taxes they would pay, the number of jobs and families they would uh, 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 increase. But um, apparently it had to start somewhere. So that was... Uh, American Chamber of Commerce was a big and great name. And it looked like you can have the opportunity uh, to really explore what's there in a the market. So uh, I, was, I was, at that specific time, I was on maternity leave and I had to uh, go back and start working with the Deloitte when then this opportunity was open. So I said, let me try it, because it looked very, very appealing to me uh, from all the previous experience I have. But seeing also the need, you know, and, uh, and um, this is where we started. <laughs> and I remember that uh, since the first, uh, one of the first thing I did in 201 after the chamber was open, it was really in the first year, I had meetings like meeting SIP in my office, which was, uh, now that I, uh, I remember back, you know, it's sometimes <coughs> is 
it's, uh, it's very interesting to see how things have developed in our countries, where we started and what type mm -hmm. of support we have uh, and how we cooperated all together. And you said there wasn't really a culture of the business and government sort of working together and partnering. How did you know how to do that? Is it was it from your previous work? You you had you knew how to sort of to build those partnerships. Um, I came. I was to a point where I was working with a specific business, where I had been working with a group of businesses in the the local chamber of commerce where I was coming from and. I returned after two years of uh, studying abroad with a big desire to make a difference in my country. Uh, the idea was actually start in my town, even though then I moved, uh, I'm from Skodra, and then I moved to, uh, to the capital city. But the, uh, uh, it was also a, a time when you could see really uh, businesses growing in, in, especially the construction industry. Uh, but there were a lot of uh, uh, new f uh, uh, agriculture also increasing and uh, and people looking for new ways to do business and export imports and services. There were the, the people trying to look for new ways to bring tourists in the country. It was quite the beginning because we still were shortage of roads, of electricity in a certain parts and uh, and um, uh, very often the the you know the the ruling the regulation was new and uh, how to get the information which door to knock how to communicate and there were um when i uh, when i uh, i had heard a lot about how business organizations work abroad and what opportunities they bring together and uh, when i saw that which was a uh, probably a good timing and sometimes it's difficult to explain the the opportunities how they come and I said I know there was also a big uh, uh, requirement to really uh, use this opportunity and I was happy I received it because um, uh, because it's uh, um, it's in developing countries um, a lot of things come out probably this is when the right moment is and uh, where you, a lot of individuals believe we need to jump in and make a change. And uh, the opportunity was given with uh, the idea of having a few businesses to open the American Chamber of Commerce in Albania. Um, and if a lot of time I, when I get the question, where, where did you start? You know, how did that happen? What we looked, uh, first of all, we believed uh, it's important that we work with, uh, we, we start giving an example what a business organization can look like and what, uh, why, how a private one can, uh, can exist when a lot of public ones believe they're doing a good job. Uh, we started um, in the beginning in a very simple way. You know, you have a number of members and you talk to them, you keep them informed and you make sure you represent them in a fair and a good way. And even though they look simple, probably, they are very important on business organizations and especially in developing democracies and developing, developing countries like Albania. Uh, what we did in the first place, we, um, we start to organize tables and round tables and talk to them. And then I remember the first one working luncheon we had with the Minister of Finance by that time, and it was in 2001. Uh, we had... Uh, probably 80 something members and almost everyone showed up. First was like, how come you have a minister coming and talk to you? And then uh, what do you, you know, how do you talk to him and what do you ask? And uh, uh, the idea was, and we had a television or two probably, there were a few uh, private ones by that time. And um, almost everyone was there more curious. And I remember before going in, a lot of them were asking me, what do you want me to ask the minister? And I said, you know, that's your chance, you have to speak. No, 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 you can go in a meeting and you don't tell the minister previously, what are you asking for? And uh, uh, we started to tell them on that case and other occasions that uh, this is why organizations like this come together. You have to have your free voice and uh, um, you have to speak open. You have to speak open and publicly. And you cannot, the, the, the power of the organizations is that you can do together something you cannot do individually. And this is, and 
uh, and this is how it started. You know, people would, in the beginning, it was not easy. People would come up with um, long questions and talking on their individual cases. Right, I was And gonna then ask they you understood, that, yeah. like, how they actually can talk on the issue more right. than the case itself. So is that how you get companies to work together and speak as one voice, focusing on the issue rather than rather. on their particular case? And that's what happened. You know, a lot of doing some education and training, but a lot of also uh, going from one event to another. And uh, people, and this is how actually the American Chamber in increased really in big numbers in the first years, because people would see a place where they, they can have a voice and they can, uh, in the beginning only when for f like two, three years where they can have a voice. And then they started to see that they can also be heard. So it's not a process that happens, you know, immediately. It, 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 really, it really takes time. And uh, the example I can give from that time, it was how companies, which are uh, used to see each other only competitors, could come on the same table and talk on the same issues. In the beginning, it was like, uh, how can we all, because we are competing, we, a lot of times we don't communicate with each other. But it was important to tell them that there are laws which affect all of us in the same way, all of you in the same way. There are regulations which probably need to be changed. The government put them in place with a good intention, but they haven't seen the business perspective. So this is how we started with small groups. We started with the committees on different issues. Then we continued with public events. We continued on specific issues like... I don't know, taxes, of course, and customs were one of the persistent issues that we have always talked with, and we still talk at Amcham, uh, issues like uh, intellectual property rights, issue, uh, issues like intellect, intellectual property rights, and issues of uh, property on uh, issue, issue of courts, issue of uh, how they fight for their uh, problems. And... Um, uh, it, it was also the example of looking how things work that brought them in in a bigger groups. Uh, and I remember when we had uh, uh, the first time, it was the end of 2003, 2004, beginning of 2004, when we had a specific request of the government. And you have a minister there and you say publicly, we would like you to change this law. And probably even not used to it, the minister says, since the business community required we're going to change it immediately and we you know it wasn't probably thought throughly how the change is going to happen but it did happen and uh, this is how you increase in the beginning when we opened there were only three really uh, business organizations around and then um, the first case when we saw that not only one organization but all together can make a powerful voice was probably 206 or 207. We had a case where one point on the law, the government couldn't accept any way our requests. So we were looking around, what are orga other organizations working on these issues? And we invited everyone, which meant seven by that time. And we sat on the same table, the presidents of the organization talking on the issue. And then uh, all together we send the issue in the Constitutional Court, which was a big news, like yeah, how the businesses can do right. this, mm -hmm. how you can, you know, kind of some were thinking attack the government, some were using it politically, but we said, you know, this is the right, we strongly believe we should win, and we actually did. And uh, this is how the new uh, steps were built, and... In 2010, 2012, when we had another issue, we have been 35 business organizations having a big coalition. And uh, those examples show that you can really have a strong voice if you build up. So through the way we were really uh, thinking on should we have those coalitions uh, just coming out uh, occasionally or should we work, have one there permanently uh, so when we have issues we can we have the structure ready to, to work together. So, and we work with a lot of partnerships, big support from you know, different projects, from EU, from USAID, uh, big projects. This is how you work with SIPE <laughs> and have great success on how you really um, 
work together. And I remember when we and Natalia were uh, two, three years ago on uh, uh, building a coalition that would be right. there. And I believe the work still continues. And I know that uh, uh, several organizations have been very interesting, Amchan for sure, <laughs> uh, how we can, uh, because important is, especially to big issues, to have one voice. And uh, even though it's, I would call, 15 to 16 years as, uh, as where those uh, processes has really started, and uh, the chambers have always been there. You know, the, I worked with the Public Chamber of Commerce in 92. The, that chamber was existed previously since 1930s. So it's not a new thing. The new thing was a volunteer, how a group of businesses voluntarily come to a business organization and they believe the services they get are worth enough to, to really work and make the difference. Um, the chambers do not work only on advocacy issues. They work on a range of, of business issues, they, uh, on education, on training, on traveling abroad to fairs, on giving information to their members. Um, having the right people to talk in the government when they are new laws, when they are confused where to go around. So it's a lot, it's a big range of services. And it's not, a, you know, when you think like how you can get there. The start wasn't easy, but now, you know, there is a process there. Uh, organizations are, 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 are very important. The government has come to a point when they they have it part of their uh, requirements when they go to the laws, they have to speak with the business community. There are forums built also from the government side that uh, they, they, they discuss the new laws, they discuss the new regulations. Uh, is there a place for improvement? Absolutely, yes. You know, Both sides believe that uh, they need to, to look for all the possible ways on how they can go forward. But um, um, it has been a, a tremendous in, uh, uh, process and development, I would say, and uh, which still goes on. Yeah, we were speaking before the podcast, weren't we, Natalia, about how strong this this became <coughs> this organization. Right, and uh, given your experience, such a rich experience uh, working in uh, both in chambers, but also uh, your long experience working with the AmCham, um, what are the key elements of success that you think uh, uh, your uh, associations uh, managed to accomplish, and what advice would you give to other, let's say, newer associations? Um, the, to the associations which are in process or to the new ones which are open, I would really advise them to be very open to members and represent them fairly. Mm -hmm. In developing countries, these are very, very important elements. We came from a history where people are not used to to um, express themselves. They're not used to uh, say what they think and they are not used to be open when it comes to requirements. So, and it, that process apparently it takes a long, it takes from one generation to another to change. So people in my generation, I finished high school, uh, university, sorry, in uh, 1990, so it was really the year of the changes. So we were all educated in a, in a planned economy, in, an, in, a, in a complete different mindset and system. And the big changes in the market economy come also with the free expression and uh, democratization of all the processes and the risk taking and how people uh, plan their future. And uh, for the new organizations, is for an organization, a business organization, and I believe any type, it's important to really fairly represent the interests of, of, your, of your members and constituency. And that's, uh, that's not easy to do. Why? Because a lot of people uh, come with a mindset that these organizations a lot of time are politically involved or they have interest groups behind them or they work for one industry but it doesn't work for another one. So you have to put strong ruling, be open what the ruling is and uh, keep up with them. And that's what we did a lot uh, at the chamber. And you have to really think of what you offer, what you promise you will offer and keep the word. 
It's probably like in politics the same, <laughs> but it is with that relatively, I would call, small group of members compared to the big population. This is where you. it's important that you should always do. And uh, in, in those organizations, really, you have a privilege to a certain extent. Uh, you can invent things, but you don't always need to invent. You come and take uh, the international best practices and apply them in the same uh, way they can apply it in your markets. And if you continue with that, you would be successful. It is important that, um, uh, that uh, you know, you keep working, you keep putting new things. It's important that your members understand that they are playing a big role for themselves, for the society, and uh, they can be, they can be uh, game changers. And uh, this is how they, they feel powerful, and uh, this is how it is important to get what's the best of them. You know, when they work in different groups, when they work on different issues, when uh, even they work together. So it's work, it's the social part, it's, you know, the combination of all those. We we used to have, you know, one, some of more um, very popular events we also had, it was the social events. Because people would come even sometimes with their co-workers, with their families, they could speak business. It was easy to network with people from the government. It was easy to network sometimes internationally because a lot of cooperation was not only with American Chambers of Commerce in Albania, but working regionally. So as long as you open and uh, you, were, you really put your soul and your mind in it, it's really important. And it's important to have good uh, leaders of the organization. Boards and precedents are very, very important. And... Um, uh, you know, people are, and businesses especially, are always smart. They, they they feel the taste on how you are truly supporting them or uh, you are trying to use them on, on your own interest. And every time you work on their interest, it just, you feel bigger and bigger support from your members. That's great. Um, and you're now ambassador uh, uh, of Albania to the United States. How does your work in, um, your background, working in civil society and working with the business community, inform your role as ambassador and your work? Uh, well, I've taken that question very often, actually, since the beginning when uh, um, I decided and it, it came publicly that I am, I am uh, taking this position. In a certain extent, it felt like um, you're doing kind of the same thing. The reason why I worked... Uh, with a specific organization, with the American Chamber of Commerce for 15 years. And what I was doing there, it was uh, I was working for a, for a better business environment, for a better economy, for more, um, for more government uh, accountability, for more transparency, for more uh, fighting corruption, for bigger economic ties with, uh, between Albania and United States, for bringing together all the forms and laws and memorandums of understanding that would increase the interest of the American companies to Albania. And that's why I always said, I'm doing the same from here. <laughs> of course, it has been uh, very interesting years from the time that I arrived. And when did you arrive? Uh, I arrived in, I started this job and I presented my credentials in May 2015 to President Obama. And uh, now the United States have a new president. So following all the changes, it has been an extremely uh, interesting time. And we are all focused on the best way to increase the cooperation between the countries. And... Um, um, uh, as you ask, it was um, what I did before, it's kind of the same, but in a completely different level. And that was the challenge I had to, I had to, uh, to convince myself, like, am I able to do it and how and what can I bring from my, my previous experience to this uh, new job? Because it is a new it is a new job. It's a lot of, it's much more politics involved, it's much more relationship involved. But it was, and it is still, kind of with the institutions I've been working before. And when I arrived here, it was none of the doors I wandered in, except the White House, <laughs> was new for me. I've, 
had been very often at the Department of State, Department of Congress, Foreign Relations Committees, in Congress, in Senate. We have done, apparently I said we have done a great job with the AMCHAMs here. We have a forum with the American Chambers of Commerce in Europe where we would come yearly in, uh, in Washington and uh, talk with different levels and we could, it was a forum, you could make questions, you can get answers. And uh, so we, I had touched, in a way, all of them. Uh, I arrived, and then in 10 days, I had to go to the White House and present my credentials, which was a, which was a unique experience. And I believe for, not only for every ambassador that comes in any country, but in the United States specifically, <coughs> because of the protocol they put together when they invite you and the family. And I had an extended family when I <laughs> when I met the president. Oh, nice. But you mm -hmm. could speak directly to him, and and uh, and even it's a you know short and brief discussions. This is, you know, you come in and you feel the power, and the res the huge responsibility that you have representing your country. We're getting close to running out of time, Ambassador, but. Um, we like to also find out a little bit about the person behind the role. And so um, tell us a little bit about how you're enjoying your time here, what it's been like adjusting to move, you know, moving. Obviously, your role's a huge one, but just what are some of the things that you've enjoyed um, about living in the United States? <laughs> um, you know, that part is, it's a lot of, personally, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of balance between work and family mm -hmm. <laughs> in I'm a sure. certain extent. Mm -hmm. But uh, work is really what takes really almost mo most of your time. Mm. Uh, when I came uh, in the United States, I, I came with uh, basically focused on, on, on three goals. Mm -hmm. on, uh, we had just signed a partnership agreement, um, a strategic partnership agreement with the United States. So I was really focused on those two years on developing that partnership. Um, the other aspect was opening the embassy and the services we offer to Albanian American community that lives or travels to the United States. Is that quite a large community? Uh, it is a relatively large community. And uh, there are three million people living in Albania. And uh, there is a big community, especially in several states. You know, you can find Albanians all over the country. And, um, and the third part was really to... Uh, uh, look at all the opportunities for increasing the economic ties between our countries. Um, when I fa first met uh, uh, President Trump, actually, and I said, I'm the ambassador of Albania, uh, he said, oh, Albania is a beautiful and a great country. And, of course, I will always remember that. And this is a good start when you, when you start talking about Albania, but not only. Albania is a country which, which was really close until 1990. And... Um, I sometimes, unfortunately, I have to use this 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 expression that we came from a time where you had to stay behind bars to get bread, to get milk. You know that type of economic development and level of uh, poverty to a certain extent. And now we are a NATO member. We are hoping soon to open the negotiations for EU membership. Uh, we are very important player on stability in the region and more. And uh, we believe we can do much more in that part of the world. We, Albania has a tremendous uh, economic potential. And it has a, um, um, in the last years you have, if you look at many lists, Albania is on top of places where you can visit. Not simply because it's probably the last secret of Europe, but in Albania you can find different type of tourism, like it's very historical, very ancient country. You can find beaches, you can find mountains, uh, hiking, biking, uh, whitewater rafting. You know, it's, it's really in such a small country you can find so many places and interesting, and it is really beautiful. We have a big potential in development on... Uh, on uh, energy, and uh, uh, there is a big project on Trans-Adriatic Pipeline that goes through Albania that it's opening a big potential of uh, developing grid lines in the country and in the region. We have potential, um, I don't know, in development in, and exporting in oil, in mining, and uh, big potential for uh, production lines. And 
we're always looking for big and new and good names of companies coming to the country. Uh, it's 25 years, but uh, we have tremendously changed. But we still are looking for uh, for a better place and for a better country. Uh, we have gone through, especially in the last year, several reforms. And the biggest one is the judicial reform that it was uh, uh, made a lot of changes in the country. It was like a at least a two-year work really focused on... Uh, and there were made changes in the constitution, in several laws, because we believe that's a big impediment even for new investments coming in, for people being uh, and businesses feeling themselves more comfortable in Albania. And, uh, you know, you, you work in partnership with, with uh, United States, with uh, European Union and all the friends and, and partners, and this is how you reach results. You know, in small scale is business, business organizations, in big scale is really countries working together. For example, in Albania in the, in, in the last year or so, the support, at least I've been, of course, involved in uh, working with the United States on partnership of making the, those new changes. And um, the, the, the support from the United States has been tremendous. You know, the United States government have been so focused and so uh, um, involved in really making a difference in our countries. I have a great um, uh, colleague, I would say, working in Albania, Ambassador Lou. He's so fantastic on being so persistent and and looking to the to what the Albanian people really have been requiring and. We believe that this uh, judicial reform is going to make a huge difference in fighting corruption, in fighting, in, uh, fighting the um, sometimes the illegal trafficking, and uh, and uh, this is why the government is so much focused on, on on making the difference on people, and we are right in a time of big changes. Actually, Albania has elections in June, so um, uh, but we're still uh, looking on. It's important that all the reforms continue and we keep the dialogue open in all levels of society. We work. It's important we continue working with the business community. And of course, they have a great partner when it comes <laughs> to working with me, if they, a lot of them look me now in the government side. And, um, and this is how the countries will develop. And you can, as I mentioned, you can see them in small scale when you see individual businesses, individual organizations, but you can see them in the big scale. It's kind of the same, uh, it's the same mindset in the same uh, way of looking forward. And it's cooperation, is being fair, is being open and really uh, uh, look at all the possible options uh, how to move forward. You have a very big role, and I'm sure you're very, very busy. Have you had a chance to um, travel around just for pleasure in the U.S.? Do you have a favorite place you can share with us that you've been I, to? Uh, actually, I've been... Uh, apparently, people count in how many states I have been in the United States. So I am at 21 now, not only on this position, I have to say that. I could travel a lot, especially uh, by the end of last year, as in Albania we were doing for the first time uh, Albanian summit. And so I had to travel to uh, uh, several states. And uh, United States is really, you know, it's really a big country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have, I've been here for the first time in 94, and I could travel from Washington State to Chicago to New York to California by then. And this is how you understand that the, the country is so big big and immense and it's it's so different from one side to another it's not always as at the movies but it's so much as some movies like people say oh that's on the movie especially the you know the the western styles and uh, people believe that all united states is you know skyscrapers and it's very difficult sometimes to explain that the majority is really like probably two level store building and uh, and uh, big farms and absolutely great people. And uh, what I see, uh, there are so many things that you can, and I'm looking forward to, to send back when you go, especially the spirit of, uh, of volunteerism, of uh, giving to the society, of cooperation, on, on, uh, on really giving as much as you can every day, not simply looking at your own, uh, 
uh, you know, family business or business or, but also interacting and moving from one place to another and being open to uh, to international and being open to you know new people coming in and uh, it is always fascinating in this country. Well, thank you so much. We are out of time, but it's been really fantastic speaking with you and particularly hearing about that business association background, which for a lot of our audience is really helpful to hear the advice and how you built up that association, but also what you're focusing on now is really fascinating. So thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you very much for and Natalia, giving me this opportunity. For, for joining well, us you. and helping out. Thank <laughs> you so much, Ambassador. You've been listening to Democracy That Delivers. For more information about the Center for International Private Enterprise, please go to our website at cipe.org. That's C-I-P-E dot org. Thanks for listening.